Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I remember when she was born. Ah, uh, little little baby. <laughs> and uh, to you online, uh, good afternoon, good evening. Who? Brother and Kathy. Hey. <laughs> I don't know what time it is, but. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. All right. Uh, open your Bible to the book of First Kings, chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. The subject of our sermon today is dejection and the angel. Do you know the word dejection? Familiar? Yeah. It's a good word, and you should know it. Uh, there are many, yeah, many words like um, depressed, disappointed, uh, disgraced. Lots of words that begin with D are very negative. Delay disorder, despondent, yeah, and uh, it's good to know de dejection. Dejection means very sad and uh, disappointed, so yeah. We, we're going to continue the story about Elijah where God is teaching us how he heals our broken world. Um, Miwa introduced a new song today, and the first line is, uh, is the world broken, and is the darkness growing? And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful song. So, um, okay, let's go into the text, and I'll um, get through this here. So, 1 Kings chapter 19, verses 1 through 8. I'll start, and please join me at the end. Now, Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, May the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. And while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough. Lord, he said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals, and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. Let's read together from verse 7. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by that food. 
he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. This is the very word of God. Amen? Amen. Well, um, sorry, let me go back. Uh, just a brief story. Last year, I discovered a new author. Her name is N.K. Jemison, and she wrote a trilogy recently. It won a lot of awards, the highest awards for fiction, and it's called the Broken Earth Trilogy by N.K. Jameson. I highly recommend it if you like fantasy and uh, magic. So, <laughs> so the story is, as the title suggests, the world is broken. And it's the story of a woman who has amazing power, but also a more powerful daughter. And the daughter doesn't want to have anything to do with the mother. She's running away from her mother. But the trilogy, the whole, the whole story of the book is how the mother is searching for her daughter. And it is the love of her daughter, the love for her daughter, and the, the healing of the relationship between the mother and the daughter is the power that brings healing to the broken earth. And so the whole fate of the broken earth relies upon the relationship of a mother and a daughter and the healing that they need. That's the story of the Bible. The earth is broken because our relationship with our Father is broken. And because our relationship with our Father is broken, our relationship with ourselves, with each other, it broke, it's broken. But God is not giving up, and he's searching for us, and he's finding us, and he's healing us, and our relationship with God is healed, and that is what heals the rest of the earth. It's the gospel. That's why I love the book. So I highly recommend uh, that story. Okay, so... Now, uh, I took you too far <laughs> because the point of the story that we read is about the process of God healing our broken hearts, our brokenness. That's the process. So here's the, here's the point. Don't try to skip the process of God healing you. I know that we don't want to experience the pain and suffering, and we want to go immediately to the power, the glory, the, the joy. But the story here is teaching us the way that God heals us. It's the process, the step by step. Oh, that's so important. And that's what we need. So, um, verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel. Ahab is the king. And he told his queen, Jezebel, everything Elijah had done how he had killed all the prophets by the sword. Do you remember last week and the week before on Mount Carmel here? Pastor Hiroshi, 
he was teaching on this this morning. Okay, karma, san no taiketsu, right? Yeah, the contest on Mount Carmel. So the easy part to to tell on this story is, you know, the 400 prophets of Baal, the 450 prophets of Ashtara, they came. Thousands of people are there. The king is there. The military is there. And the 950 prophets, they're dancing and they're shouting and they're cutting themselves. And Baal, the god of the sky and the god of the weather, the thunder god, he did not answer. They're cutting themselves. They're shouting. Elijah is mocking them. You should shout louder. You should sing more. Maybe he's on the toilet. Maybe he's sleeping. Maybe he's distracted. You should wake him up. Right? Nothing happens. And so uh, finally, they're finished. It's Elijah's turn. He says, OK, here's the altar. Put the cow on there. Pour some water. Put some more water. And put some more water. Three times. He says, just make it all wet. And that's crazy because they're three years into a drought and famine. There's no water. So just put more water and water. That's crazy. So he prays. Elijah prays. God, you are God. You are turning the hearts of the people back to you. So please answer my prayer. Right? And what happens? Thunder comes down, and everything's on fire. The water's dried up. The whole cow gone. Everything is on fire. And thousands of people shout, Yahweh, he is God. Yahweh, he is God. Okay, that's the easy part to preach. The next verse I didn't put on the sermon, because did you read it? Elijah says, okay, let's kill all the prophets of Baal. Yeah, not easy to preach, okay? But that's what happens. And all the prophets of Baal are killed. They're put to the sword. Big victory for Elijah. Big victory for Yahweh. And now, the rest of the story is, Elijah goes to the top of the mountain. He looks towards the sea. So he's on Mount Carmel. He can see the Mediterranean Sea. He's looking out, and he can see the rain cloud coming. Yeah? It's coming. It's going to start raining. Now the water is coming. God is finally going to send revival to Israel. All of the people of this kingdom, the northern kingdom, They'll, go, they'll, they'll throw away Baal and Ashtra. They'll go back to Yahweh. Yay! Revival. Yeah? No. That's not what happens. Okay. So, back to verse 1. Ahab told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So, that's all of the ha second half of chapter 18. Verse 2. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severe, severely, if by this time tomorrow I don't make you lar your life like that of one. In other words, may I end up dead if you don't end up dead tomorrow by this time. Right? If I don't die, if you don't die, then I'll die. Basically, you're dead. The queen is saying, you think you won? You think Baal and Astra is finished? I have just begun. I'm coming for you, Elijah. So, uh, please take a note. I, I put it in yellow, the word messenger. Jezebel sent a messenger. The, the word in Hebrew is malach, malach. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Verse 3, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. 
This is called shock. Okay? That's the first step before you get to dejection. Okay? What? Are you serious? On the mountain, the fire came, the thunder, we killed the prophets, the rain is coming, it's raining already, we won. And then shock, no, 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 you're dead. In 24 hours, we're coming for your life. So Elijah was afraid, verse 3, he ran for his life. Now watch what happens. When he comes to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there. What does that mean? So he runs from here with the triangle. He runs down, 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 all the way to the bottom of the kingdom of Judah. And there he says to his servant, we're done. What, what, what's he doing? Elijah is quitting the ministry, right? Elijah is a prophet, okay? And he has a kind of staff, okay? And so he says, staff, you're fired, <laughs> Kubi, okay? We're finished, no more ministry. Jezebel does not give up, and we're going to die. So you go ahead, sayonara, okay? That's my... Bad Nihongo, sayonara. Okay, so he, he goes there, he gives them up, and then what happens? Uh, verse 4. While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. That's dejection. Okay? I have had enough, Lord. Take my life. I'm no better than my ancestors. So, in verse 3, we have shock. How could this happen? What just happened? And then in verse 4, dejection, which is disappointment plus sadness. I'm dejected. And so, he's, how sad is he? He wants to die. But please notice, he's not like a modern person. See, modern people, we think we have the right to take our life, right? We, we can just commit suicide, jump off a cliff, take poison, cut our wrist, whatever. But the ancient people, they knew, I don't have a right to kill myself. That doesn't even enter his mind. If he wants to die, he won't kill himself. God will do the job. So he prays, God, please take my life. And he says here, I am no better than my ancestors. What is he saying? He's talking about the prophets before him. His ancestors are, you know, maybe because prophets is kind of like a business. And if you're the prophet, your, your son will be the prophet and your son's son will be the prophet. And the prophets were supposed to speak God's word to the people. The prophets were supposed to be the voice of God to the people. The prophets were supposed to uh, help save the people, help heal the broken world. And what Elijah says is, I'm not the one. I can't save this people. I'm no better than the one who went before me, who just, he did his work, he died, the people are still lost. My grandfather, he tried to save people, he died, the people are still lost. I'm no better than them. I'm not the one who will bring revival. I'm not the one who will bring a great work of God. I'm no better than my ancestors. Right? Whew. Dejection, depression, just sadness. Okay? So, what's next? What does God do? Well, next verse, verse 5. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep, right? 
Yeah, I, boy, do you, do you do that when you're depressed, when you're sad? Sometimes the only thing you can do is just sleep, right? Yeah, amen, somebody, okay, <laughs> let's just, I don't want to get up, I don't, just, just stay in bed, you know? Now, so that's what Elijah did. He's broken. Now watch. Watch how God brings the healing. And let's learn some lessons here. All at once, an angel touched him and said, get up and eat. So the word is malak. Wait, where was that word before? Messenger from verse... Uh, Sorry, verse 2. So in verse 2, Jezebel sent a malak, okay? Oh, this thing. And now in verse 5, not, not Jezebel, but God sent a malak. So the Hebrew is trying to show you something, but the English made the mistake. Okay? Bad translation. Right? It says angel. Well, why does it say angel? Why does it say messenger for Jezebel, but angel for verse 6, for verse 5? Well, let's... All right, thank you. Sasuga sensei. Okay, so, so the angel touched him and said, wait, 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 wait. If it's an angel, an angel is a spiritual being. So how does an angel touch a physical? The angel was physical. You see? If it's something spiritual, how? He does, he, does he have a feeling in his heart? No, it doesn't say that. Does he have a thought? Does he hear a voice? No, it says he touched him. Like a physical. So the angel, this mal malach, was physical. Okay? All right, keep that in mind. Verse 6. Ah, no, no. He said, get up and eat. Elijah, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray. Elijah, confess your sins. Elijah, pray in faith. Elijah, claim the promises. No, it doesn't say that. Right? Elijah, go to church. Go, you know, Elijah, right? Uh, you know, be more spiritual. Read, read more Bible. Pray more. No. Elijah, eat. Have some food. Our healing is not only mental, psychological, it's not only spiritual. Our healing involves physical processes. When somebody comes to me and they're, they need advice, they're sad, they're tired, they're depressed, the first question I ask how, how long do you sleep last night? How, how many hours are you sleeping? Because if you're not sleeping, you're not resting physically, of course you're going crazy. Sleeping one hour, two hours, three hours a night for one week, two weeks. Yeah. So you are not only spiritual. You're also physical. But also the other way, people think you, you're, you don't have a soul. You don't have a spirit. So they don't answer. They, they just say, oh, you're sad? You're depressed? Okay, take these pills that give you energy or take these chemicals that calm you down. Okay? And they don't talk about, right? Right? Resting in, in a spiritual sense. Finding peace through truth. 
and grace. They, they don't talk about that. So it's, it's always usually one or the other, but God is saying, no, 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 it's all of it. Okay? So there's wisdom there, part of the, pr the, the process of healing. So let's keep going. Verse 6, Elijah, he's, somebody touches him. Okay? He looks around. He says, eat what? I'm in the desert. Eat what? And he looks, and there by his head, there's bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. Ah. It's not just cold bread. It's not just uh, stale old bread. Remember in chapter 17, uh, 17 the, the ravens, they brought food. Maybe some kind of rotten meat or old meat or old. No, this is hot baked bread. Dekitate pan. Right here. Yeah. Are you, are you dejected? Are you sad? Are you going through difficult? Are you, eat some good food. Get some good rest. Read a good book. Take a good walk. Yeah. Go to the onsen. Take a nice good soak in the water. Right? It was baked bread, hot coals, jar of water. Yeah. And he, he ate and drank. And then what? Yush. No, no, no. He went back to sleep. He got more rest. It's amazing. Right? All right, okay. We, okay, we, yeah, I think we got the point. Now, verse 7. Then the angel of the Lord. So this word angel is the same word from verse 5 and is the same verse, ver, word from verse 2, the malak. But now it says... Malach Yahweh. Yahweh means, is the name of God, okay? And the English is, it says Lord, all right? There's a whole history of that, but don't worry about it. It just means God. So, the angel of God, or the angel of the Lord, Malach Yahweh, came back. So, this Malach means he came back. So, that's the same Malach from verse 5, same one. Okay? Came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat. The journey is too much for you. You're going to go far. I know where you are going. And if you don't have physical rest and physical food, it's going to be too far. Verse 8 So he got up and ate and drank, and strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights. Sugoi. That's some good bread. <laughs> yeah. It takes you 40 days. All right. So now, because it says 40 days and 40 nights, that is a trigger. That's a switch. That's supposed to make you think, ah, ha, 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 ha. This story is much deeper than its words. Okay? When it says 40 days, 40 nights, it's not just saying this is what happened. It's saying this is the meaning. So 40 days, 40 nights, what's the first time that it talks about 40 days and 40 nights in the Bible? Who knows? What does 40 days, 40 nights... Does anybody know the story that has 40 days and 40 nights? I'm looking at you, Tim. 40 days, 40 nights, first time in the Bible. Okay, hint. This is a story about rain, Elijah, the rain, 40 days, 40 nights, rain. Noah's Ark. I knew I could count on you, right? Noah Hakobune. 40 days, 40 nights, okay, right? What's the story of Noah? God saving a small group of people to start a new world. Now, the story of Elijah, chapter 19. We didn't read it, but I'll give you a hint. This is a story of God saving a few people to save Israel. This is next week's lesson. 
But that just gives you a little hint, okay? So if this is 40 days and 40 nights, it means something. We have to go back to the other words in the story. What do those mean? If 40 days and 40 nights is a deeper meaning, then the other words have a deeper meaning. What words? What words have the deeper meaning? Verse 7, Malach Yahweh. This is what, this is the secret, the, the key to the power of the healing that God brings, okay? So, let me show you the first time that we have Malach Yahweh, the angel of the Lord. Does anybody know the first place? Tim, I'm not going to give you, put you on the spot. No? Okay. Maybe somebody on YouTube, maybe Tim Hawthorne on YouTube, he's going, I know, I know, right? <laughs> Mr. Bible School. Okay, I'll show you. Uh, let's see. Press the wrong button here. So, uh, this is Genesis chapter 16. It's the story of a slave woman who is in trouble. She has a child from her master. And because of the child, the, the master's wife is jealous of her child. And so she is kicked out of the house. Okay? And this slave woman's name is Hagar, or Hagar. And her master's wife is Sarai. And now their relationship is broken. So Hagar, she's, she's kicked out of the house. She's in the desert. Elijah. She's in the desert. She's under a bush. She, she, she takes the, the child. She puts him down and walks away from the child. She thinks he's going to die. I'm going to die. We have no money, no family, nothing. She's dejected. She's depressed. And who comes to her in that situation? The Malach Yahweh. Sarai mistreated Hagar, so she fled from her. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, where have you come from, and where are you going? I'm running away from my mistress, Sarai, she answered. The angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress, submit to her, the angel added. I will increase your descendants as much as they will be too numerous to count. The angel of the Lord also said to her, you are now pregnant, and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael, for the Lord has heard of your ministry, uh, ministry, misery. Excuse me. So here is Hagar in the desert, depressed, and who visits her? The Malach Yahweh. Now that expression, Malach Yahweh, it's, it's everywhere in the Old Testament, so it's in the story of Abraham, where Abraham is going to sacrifice his son Isaac on, uh, on the mountain. He provides the, 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 the lamb or the ram as a substitute for his son. That's the angel of the Lord. That's in Genesis 22. Genesis 31, his son Jacob, his grandson Jacob, uh, he's sleeping on the, on the rock. He's running away from his brother. And the angel of the Lord comes to him, okay? But let me tell you one more place where we see it, okay? Just one more. Where am I? In Exodus chapter 3, yeah, the story of Moses, okay? So Exodus chapter 1 and 2, Moses is growing up. He thinks... He is going to save Israel. Israel is the slave population. And Moses, maybe he has the vision from God. Maybe he has the, 
he hears God and he, he says, ah, I'm going to help free my people. So he tries to help them. He ends up killing somebody. He runs away. He's in the desert. He's depressed. He thought he was the hero. He's not the hero. And he's, he's taking care of sheep now. And then he goes up to a mountain, just following his sheep to help them graze. And then he sees the burning bush. Okay? So now, Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb. Horeb, the mountain of God. There the Malach Yahweh appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that the bush was on fire. It did not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called him from within the bush. Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals from the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And at this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Wait, 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 wait. Just a moment. Inside the bush, the, the firing, the flaming bush, is the Malach Yahweh. Right? But it says, Yah, the Lord, that's Kamisama, that's Elohim, saw that he had gone over to God, called to him from within the bush. Wait, well, just do it. So wait, here's the angel of the Lord. And here is God. Well, who is it? In the bush. Is it God? Or is it the angel of God? The answer? Yes. Is it Yahweh? Is it Elohim? Is it God? Or is it the angel of Yahweh? Is it the Malach Yahweh? The answer is Yes. So here is the here is the thing. He is God, the angel of God is God, but somehow he's different from God. So it's a separate and separate thing, separate person, but yet it's the same person. That's the mystery. Are you following it? There's a mystery there. So what can we see from this story, the Malach Yahweh, from Exodus to Genesis to now Elijah? What's happening? Who is the angel of God? Okay, so here it is. This is our conclusion. We're going to the communion soon. The angel of God is God. That's Genesis 3. So let's, let's, let's put it another way. The angel of God, because remember, he touched Elijah right? He touched them. Physical. The angel of God is the physical manifestation of the ultimate spiritual reality. The ultimate spiritual reality. God. But the angel is the physical manifestation of that. Now, that definition, the physical manifestation of the ultimate spiritual reality, Nagasugiru, that's a long word. There's one word that's easier to, to show that idea. That one word is image. The angel of God is the physical image of God. Okay? Because God is someone you don't see. You can't see what Moses hid his face so that if I see God, I'll die. You don't see God. He's spiritual, but even if you try to look, You'll, you'll be dead because of his holiness. So the word we're using is image. 
So now we go through the rest of the Bible. There's one person who is called the image of God. His name was Jesus Christ. So here it is, 2 Corinthians 4. The light of the glorious gospel of Christ, Messiah, Christos, who is the image of God. Look at Colossians chapter 1. The Son is the image of the invisible God. The firstborn over all creation. Okay? This is a story about an angel. So look at Hebrews chapter 1, talking about angels. The sun is the radiance of God's glory, the exact representation of his being. The exact representation. Well, how does the sun represent God? Physically. In the flesh. And so in Hebrews it continues. Sustaining all things by his powerful word, after he had provided purification from sins, for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven, and so he became superior to the angels. As the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. This is talking about Jesus, who is higher in rank and in authority than the angels. So, We go back to Elijah. The angel who touched Elijah is the Malach Yahweh, the angel of the Lord. The angel is the image of God. The angel of God is God because he is the image of God. The image of God is Jesus Christ. So, final question. Who touched Elijah? Elijah. Who spoke to Hagar? Who is in the burning bush? It's the image of God, who is the Son of God, who is Jesus Christ. Jesus was there healing Elijah. Get up, have some food. You want to rest? Take a break. The story will continue next week. But we want to look how Jesus heals us. He does it with kindness, with rest, with grace, with, with just, take, just take a break, with a touch. Hallelujah. Yeah, that's the gospel. So, here we are. We're going to come to the table. And when we come to the table, I want you to think of Elijah. He looked, and there was the bread waiting for him. And there was the jar of water. We get something better. We get the bread who is Jesus himself, the bread of life. And we get something better than water. We get his blood. Yeah, are you okay? Yeah. Okay. Wow, thanks, Mia. Yeah. I'm, in, I'm at the climax of the sermon. <laughs> so, we get the bread of Jesus. We get the blood of Christ. We get something better. And you know what? That is our healing. That's how God heals us. So, hallelujah. All right. So, uh, how are we doing? Do we have the, the slides for communion? Do we have the communion slides? Already? Yeah. All right. Okay. Can I take over? Is that good? Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, let me read from John chapter 6. This is Jesus Christ. He says, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever.